Hello everyone, this is Zen. This is gonna be an awesome video for new people because we're gonna be talking about what every central bank in the world is working on. This article I just posted five hours ago. It's gonna be an offer, awesome reference tool for you guys. I'm gonna post it in the description below, but yeah, every central bank in the world are working on something called CBDCs and most people are totally unaware of what this is and what's happening. The whole world is distracted and uh, because the whole world is distracted, lots of people that are aware and paying attention are gonna be able to have an opportunity of a lifetime and uh, be involved in some of the, I think, personally, some of the biggest ROI potential investments ever. So we live in really exciting times for the people that are paying attention and uh, shout out to everybody that's doing their best to uh, help other people realize just the magnitude of what's actually happening. So let's get into this article. Here's what every central bank in the world is working on. Ever needed a comprehensive list of where each central bank is at with their re respective central bank digital currency? Well, here it is. This article has provided the most recent CBDC development across 80 central banks. So I'm gonna tag this in the description below. And here's something that's important to know for the new people is it discusses what a central bank uh, digital currency is, but let's be real. These central bankers have gotten so cocky that they're creating their own money. And uh, they have a specific term right here saying retail and wholesale CBDC use cases interoperability. And we know that according to the central bank digital currency policymaker toolkit posted by the World Economic Forum back in January of 2020, the Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution. I know you guys have heard about the World Economic Forum. If we go to page number 17, we could see the most relevant for uh, wholesale CBDCs, the crypto assets are XRP for inter and intra bank payments and settlements. So XRP is, has something, a protocol called the Interledger Protocol, and that is basically interoperability for payments. So uh, if you ever had a friend that uses Cash App and you tried to send him PayPal, they aren't interoperable. Those networks don't communicate with each other. So you had to either download Cash App or ask your friend to download PayPal so you could send money to each other. Well, XRP eliminates that interoperability. So we could see a whole list starting from A to Z on all the different central banks, digital currencies that are, you can see Bhutan, you can see Australia. And this is all what they're all working on. They're, Australia is working on development of retail and wholesale. You have information as soon as December, 2021. So make sure to look through this whole list and you can see why, the, why they have the whole world distracted right now whole world is working on something so big behind the scenes and this isn't new they've been working on this for a long time deploying blockchain and distributed ledger technology for government digital transfer transformation overcoming barriers to adoption this is the world bank so another article i was deep diving into by the world bank blockchain opportunities for private enterprises uh, enterprises in emerging markets. So another thing that you guys have, I'm sure you've noticed that there, you've heard a lot of talk about issues with supply chains. So if we go to Google on supply chain, we would see supply chain woes could worsen as China imposes the COVID lockdowns. More supply, supply chain problems will mean inflation stays high. Over and over again, we've, we've had supply chain issues. Well, if we look at the World Bank's research, we can see that even Harvard Business Review has been studying this for a long time, how global supply chains are about to get better thanks to blockchain, uh, March 13th, 2017. Blockchain technology is uniquely suited to create efficiency improvements in supply chains so that we end up with dynamic de demand chains instead of rigid supply chains, resulting in more efficient resource use for all. So 
there's a lot of issues because we need to transition and some could even say this is all planned you know we need to transition to a new system which is blockchain is going to solve all these issues look into all the stuff all the research has been happening with the imf as well international monetary fund this is 2022 the note from distributed ledger technology experiments and payments and settlements so there's been all these different experiments going on with with payments and settlements with the imf and the world bank uh, here's the executive summary the last decade was a wake-up call for financial sector with many explorations made into the use of distributed ledger technologies dlt for payments and settlements, DLT has triggered a wave of innovation, experiments, research, and analysis of policy issues. Many lessons can be drawn from these projects to help inform policymakers and industries on DLT's potential benefits and risks, which could have implications on international standards for financial infrastructure to ensure safety, efficiency, and public interest. So far, experiments with DLT point to potential for financial infrastructures move towards real-time settlement, flatter structures and continuous operations and global reach. Testing in large value payments is key. Testing in large value payments and security settlements has partly demonstrated the technical feasibility of DLT for this new environment. The project analyzed associated with operational capacity, re resiliency, liquidity savings, settlement finality, and privacy DLT-based solutions can also facilitate delivery versus payment of security, payment versus payment of foreign exchange transactions, and efficient cross-border payments. Most importantly, the downside, let's talk about the negative. The negative is the immaturity and the lack of interoperability of the technology. That's what they're saying here. They're really excited about the large value payments, but they're basically, they're saying the technology immaturity and lack of interoperability is something that they're still working on. So that's something that you have to remember for later on in this video. So Project Jasper, you could see the notes on all the different tests. So product for the large value payment systems, we have Project Jasper. Uh, we have Project Ubin. Project Ubin is based out of Singapore. Project Jasper is based out of Canada. I have another video on my page you could watch called Project Stella. This is Euro area in Japan. I've already covered this one. Product Jasper, a Canadian experiment with distributed ledger technology for domestic interbank settlement. And people that wrote this paper, the paper was prepared by Payments Canada, Bank of Canada, and R3. So R3 prepared this and put this all together. Uh, two people put this, the, two people from R3 contributed to this, to, uh, to, Project Jasper. By the way, guys, it's late. I'm really tired of filming this video. I actually just looked at the clock. It's 10.07 at night. <laughs> and uh, so Project Ubin, Central Bank Digital Money using distributed ledger technology. Project Ubin is Monetary Authority of Singapore. Acknowledgements, R3. Uh, what's really important to know about this document is they say the future is here. Project Ubin on distributed ledger. The future is here. People want to go back to the past, but we're moving to the future. All This is all official documents. I'm going to have all this tagged. They're talking about the benefits of distributed ledger technology. And here's where it's gonna get really interesting for the new people. R3 is planning, well, has articles that they're using XTC token. This is the ISO 20022 certified coin, the lowest valued uh, XTC 
is a settlement token on, on R3. And also the first settlement mechanism uses XRP for uh, the universal settler application to facilitate global payments on Corda. XRP, the first settlement mechanism. The universal because it's interoperable. So that means if, if you have PayPal and someone has Cash App, both of those networks are actually be able to communicate with each other because there's interoperability, like someone with AT&T calling someone with a T-Mobile phone, different networks that could still talk to each other. So R3 is basically, you know Scooby-Doo when they unmask the ghosts? Basically every single central bank digital currency we unmask, R3 is behind it. And I kind of laugh because we just seen that uh, Jared Kushner article with Steve Mnuchin where they're like, oh, we don't want to choose winners. Well, it definitely looks like the world powers have chose winners when it comes to uh, distributed ledger technologies. So remember I told you I wanted you to remember that key thing about interoperability. So the World Bank and IMF News recognizes Quant's unique overledger interoperability platform that uses an enterprise API based, based approach. So this is the blockchain interoperability report. I already have it open. And what's important about this report is it also features the interledger. It also features Stronghold, uh, the Gates Foundation, Moja Loop, which all talks about using XRP, Project Stellar, which is R3. Lots of people don't like uh, hearing the <laughs> Gates Foundation connection. But yeah, we're talking about all the money. So everyone's going to be playing ball on the level playing field. This is a good document to explore uh, blockchain and interoperability. Quant is featured in this four times. So what's important to know about central bank digital currency is David Schwartz gave us some warning about them. So I'm, I'm a big fan of XRP the native asset on the XRP ledger. I am not a fan of CBDCs because they're issued by banks. I did not trust banks. I've never trusted a bank. Why would I trust their central bank digital currency? Like, why would I ever trust that? First of all, there's potential out that they could potentially freeze your asset. They could potentially put negative interest rates on that asset. You name it, they could potentially do. So this is what David Schwartz basically warned us about the XRP ledger. Given the increased popular, popularity of issued assets on the XRP ledger and the various airdrops going on, it's probably a good idea to remind people that the XRP ledger permits issuers to freeze assets that they, that they issue. If you choose to hold an asset that someone has issued, unless they have disabled this feature, they can prevent you from trans Burying the asset. Other than destroying it, they could also unfreeze after a freeze. This is a powerful feature that permits the XRP ledger to be used to represent and transfer legal obligations. Legal obligations can be frozen by actions outside the ledger, such as court order. The ledger needs some way to represent those external actions. Before you think of an issued asset behaving like a cryptocurrency, make sure you've checked whether or not the issuer has disabled freezing. They haven't, if they haven't disabled, disabled it, their issued asset isn't like cryptocurrencies. No, but here's a key thing. Nobody issued XRP. This is the key thing. Nobody issued XRP. So XRP can never be frozen on the XRP ledger. But all other assets other than XRP are issued and their issuers can freeze them unless they're revocably given up that right. If there's a project that, that, if there's a project that's not being forthcoming and honest about this, please call them out and ask them to give up the ability to freeze it. If it seems like this was just an oversight on their part. Also, an issuer can abandon an asset entirely, preventing anyone from using it. This can be done temporarily or per permanently. Currently, the only way to give up this ability is to abandon the, issuer, the issuing account by setting its regular key to zero and disabling the master key. 
the most important thing you have to re read is nobody issued XRP. So XRP can never be frozen on the XRP ledger. It's the native asset, uh, it's sensor resistant. This is why basically different governments that aren't necessarily allies will eventually agree on XRP being a standard because they don't have to worry about someone freezing their XRP or uh, blocking their XRP transaction at government level. Now, here's something else. When central bank digital currencies issue their currency off of their, off the XRP ledger, do you think they're gonna be acting like a cryptocurrency? No, I think they are doing it to control you. And it's probably gonna be one of the most dangerous things ever to exist. Imagine they just say, hey, you haven't got your booster this week. You need it, you're on timeout. Your funding has been paused for a week. That's what a big brother does. So I don't know if somebody could record this clip and make this like a short clip. Maybe we can make this go viral, but I think this is really important to, to know. Uh, that's why I believe XRP is a hard asset like, like gold or silver. Because uh, first of all, there's only 100 billion XRP. So we know there's only a certain amount and you know, as long as it becomes adopted, the value is going to go up over time. But um, it's sensor resistant, and that's really important. There's multiple videos of David explaining the sensor resistant factors of XRP. But here's the most important part is that nobody issued XRP, so XRP can never be frozen on the XRP ledger, but all other assets other than XRP are issued. And their issuers can freeze them unless they're revocably giving up their right. So somebody clip that and send it to me. And let me go even deeper is after this, basically tweet someone from David, different projects start to say, hey, we've given up the rights. Like Sologenics has done all these instructions that David Schwartz have stated. So they're acting like a cryptocurrency. But what I'm, what I'm warning you about I don't believe these 80 central banks have good plans for these central bank digital currencies. That's why it's important to teach people about what the bankers plans are so people can plan ahead and know what's coming. These R3 isn't working with no small people. We see Microsoft, NASDAQ, we see Amazon on here earlier, PayPal. Biggest in the world are with R3. I just showed you Marco Polo. Marco Polo, MasterCard, big, 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 big Alpha Bank. So I hope you guys, uh, this helped you guys kind of paint a picture of what's happening in the world. Um, crazy stuff. The world is changing. Today I went out to eat. I wanted to show you guys this. Today I went out to eat, order some food, sat down, and my food was delivered to me. A robot actually delivered my food. So uh, things are changing. It's, it's, uh, it's going to be exciting for some. It's going to be rough for some. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy this information. Uh, have an awesome day and peace.